Considering canceling Christmas due to financial strain? Sole provider for family? All credit cards maxed? Negative bank balance? Upcoming missed payments until my next check? Basically destitute for the foreseeable future. My wife and I usually decorate on Black Friday, but this year I don't want to. The thought of putting up our fake tree, knowing I'll have nothing to put under it, fills me with such a mix of shame, anger, and pain. I would prefer to just let December pass and cut out as many things as I can until I can get my finances under control. Plus, my daughter is too. She won't know, care, or even remember one missed Christmas. So am I the asshole? I'm already a failure as a husband and father, so what say you here? This has spun out of control. I never thought my sad man pity party would get this kind of response. I was expecting to be called an asshole, validate my self-loathing, and claw my way out of debt by working harder. I did not expect the absolute torrent of love and support that I in no way deserve or can accept. Info, and I am so sorry for not making this crystal clear in the original post. Our mortgage and utilities are paid, there is food in our fridge, and my next paychecks is secure, even though it too will all go to bills with none left over for gifts. I pretended not to notice that we weren't keeping up our pre-child lifestyle without credit cards, and I got in over my head, and now have to dig myself out of a relatively deep hole, meaning I won't have money for gifts and meals out and holiday gatherings and whatnot for a good bit of time to come. But I have a great job and an outstanding family support system, who all live close by and know what debt feels like and we'll understand if we can't chip in this year with anything but our presence. But it just felt shameful to have the advantages I have and still manage to fuck it up as bad as I did without asking for help. As for all the people begging me to accept help, here is why I can't. I make a good salary. There is no chance of me or my family going hungry. We have food and will have money for food budgeted into my paychecks, which are secure as my job is secure. I have an extremely well-funded 401k from 18 years of office work and life insurance to safeguard my family. Thank you all who were offering food. Thank you all who offered to buy my two-year-old's Amazon wish list. She's two and does not have one. My wife and I had already decided that she has too many toys, and so we had only things like books and a learning tablet in mind for her. She'll be okay if we can't buy her stuff. She already has stuff. Her close-in-age cousins live on our street, and we exchange toys and clothes all the time, and both our houses are cluttered with stuff. This was not about garnering pity or soliciting charity. It was my insecurity equating gifts with love that warped Christmas for me. It almost ruined Christmas for me. Regardless of the vote here, I truly am the asshole for that. So, please, turn your charity to your communities, your neighbors. Not some middle-class jagoff who spent himself into debt trying to prove how much he loved a family that only needed him to be a happy and healthy presence at home. You all have humbled me beyond words, beyond charity. You have given me both the perspective and the courage to seek professional help, both financial and psychological. And hopefully it's not too late for this stupid old man to become a better father and husband. Yes, Virginia, there is a Santa Claus. His spirit is truly embodied in all of you beautiful and selfless Redditors. Never lose the light. Love and cheer to all. But as you can see, I deserve neither your charity nor your goodness, and I'm going to go disappear back into anonymity now if possible and work on me. Update, I live in the mid-Atlantic United States. When we got pregnant, after six years of trying and failing and treatments and tears, we found out that it would cost us $50 a month for my wife to work her current job and put our daughter in full-time daycare, as daycare costs upwards of $1,600 a month for even local co-ops, to say nothing of the dollar $2,100 plus that most daycare companies were asking. The solution was for her to retire and take up the even harder job of full-time mother. I work eight, five at a day job, and I pick up shifts DJing at a local bar at night and DJ private events slash weddings slash etc. when I can book them. My daughter was about to turn two and be able to start three-day-a-week preschool for far less than the cost of five-day-a-week daycare, meaning my wife could work again, at least part-time. I was in the referral process to find a surgeon to do my vasectomy when we found out that despite using birth control, my wife was pregnant again. We're due in February, a little boy this time. Utter shock, disbelief, some truly unhealthy thoughts, and finally acceptance 
that I was going to have to continue to be the full-time provider, as there was no way we could put two kids in full-time care. So once again, my sainted wife will have to spend at least another two years as a full-time mom. My wife and I are old people, 42M, 40F, who tried to have kids earlier in life, but couldn't despite multiple treatments, and only succeeded when we stopped trying so hard and resigned ourselves to the thoughts of a comfortable dual income. No kid's lifestyle full of travel and memories. Bringing one life into this world at 40 after everything we went through was a laugh, only for life to turn around and bless me with a second child. My wife is overjoyed, and I am happy but terrified of how I will afford this. She applied for part-time seasonal work to help with our bills, but the job she was hired for has given her exactly two shifts in two weeks and taken one of those shifts away at the last minute due to overstaffing. She has a meeting with them today to find out if it's worth her time to stay employed there, dependent on if they can actually give her at the least 20 hours a week, which she requested upon applying. We have had joint finances since we were engaged. We don't hide things from each other. We're both well aware of our money issues and have been working on ways to improve our financial situation. Thank you all for the links and sites. I am bookmarking them all. We have and will keep communication open. It was our promise made to each other 13 years ago to never shoulder our burdens alone. Lastly, hopefully I know this is long, I am humbled by your offers of charity, dear strangers. Truly and deeply humbled. I cannot accept them, be it out of foolish pride or some other moral driver, but know that your kind words and even kinder offers have softened my resolve to cancel Christmas this year. I just spent two days with co-workers volunteering at two local food banks, preparing meals, clothes, and groceries for the community. So if you're one of the many wonderful strangers who offered help, please give that help to your local charity. I have a roof over my head and food in my belly, and I could not ask for more, not when I have so much already. I still dread the thought of lugging that old fake tree out of the laundry room, but my feelings have to come third, here and always. My wife and daughter need the love and joy that that old tree will bring, and I need to give them everything I can, even if it's the just the spirit of the season. They deserve to feel the warmth of a festive home, and we already own the damn thing, so it's literally the least I can do. My presence will be the one million pictures my wife will take of our daughter, pulling all the ornaments she can reach off the tree and showing them to her with that beautiful smile she has. Our families are close by, and our parents will no doubt do their best to spoil our daughter, and I know it will be more than enough. Update. Wife and I downloaded a budget app and are working with a family member who does financial planning. I personally spoke with someone, a professional, early this morning, and in just the initial phone call, she helped me realize that I was equating being able to give gifts with showing love to my family. Not being able to afford baubles isn't going to mean I love them less and I will need to accept that, and I will continue to work with her as long as my insurance will allow. Thanks to close friends with growing kids, we have an embarrassment of clothes and toys to sort through, and wrapping some of these items for my little girl to tear into is more than good enough for my wife and I. My wife and I have plenty of clothes. Thank you to all who have offered to purchase things for us. My heart bursts from the selfless and wonderful offers, but I meant what I said when I asked you to please point your humongous hearts to your local charities. I have more than enough things, and taking things from strangers to compensate for my poor spending habits feels wrong. It will be a tough few months, but I have a good job with opportunities to grow, and I'm going to work with professionals to learn some much needed budget control, and work with a therapist to learn to accept help from family and friends when the new baby arrives and to be less hard on myself. I am also going to spend more time with my local food bank, I signed up to help build meal kits this week to be distributed for Christmas in my community. I'm planning on giving generously this season, just not in the consumerist sense. I think that's a new tradition that my family can and will preserve for years to come. Even y'all who called me a stupid cunt. Thank you too for keeping me grounded. To those of you who have asked, how could I have tried for six years to have a kid and not bothered to budget for it once it came? are greatly underestimating how much fertility treatments cost, even with insurance, and how well and truly fucked American healthcare really is. We are taking steps to ensure that this kid will be our last. And I actually brought up abortion, but my wife would not even consider it.